Welcome back to Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp. With me today is Cinquetta Wilkes. Cinquetta is multifaceted. She's an author and certified life coach. She welcomes new opportunities to help women from all walks of life build self-esteem and live life to the fullest, regardless of relationship status. Her empathetic approach holds space for clients to embrace their strengths, push through obstacles, through roadblocks, and learn to love themselves for their inherent value. Independent outside forces, opinions, and expectations, her books, The Master Reset, A Girl's Ultimate Guide to Clearing Off Space from Her Spiritual Hard Drive, and He Is Not the Prize, You Are, How to Flip the Script, Regain your power and live a life you love. Speak Cinquetta's unique messages and provide a blueprint for women beginning their own journeys toward greater happiness and self-discovery. And without further ado, I'm going to welcome Cinquetta Wilkes to the stage so she could talk more about her journey. Today, we're really going to unpack self-love and how that carries over to dating and relationships. Hello everyone. Hi Genesis. Thank you so much for having me on your show today. My pleasure. And I really want to unpack who is Cinquetta because when we know who you are at the core, we know what that self-love looks like for you. And self-love is going to look differently for each individual because it comprises of self-aware, self-actualization, and so many more things. So let's unpack who you are beyond the bio and let's go beyond the surface. Okay, great. So Cinquetta underneath the surface is a woman that is learning how to accept God's love for her daily. It was definitely a work in progress. And I really feel like I didn't know how to love myself because I didn't know how God loved me. And I really feel like the only way that I was able to uncover that was by going back to his word, reading the Bible, because for so long, I was under an impression that, okay, the Bible is an old book, like it's, it's antiquated, like it's the book that your mama and your grandmama and them be, let, be reading and go by. That Bible don't got nothing to do with me today as a millennial. That, that Bible is not going to be able to speak my language. God don't know what I be going through. Like, do he know what I got to keep up with on Instagram and try to look a certain way, talk a certain way, dress a certain way? God do not know what I'm going through. There's no way like the Bible is going to be able to speak to me. But, oh, you know, the devil's a liar. Once I actually got into the word of God for myself, I'm like, oh, my gosh, no. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. That is a real thing for me. Once I really sat up there and took the time to read the Bible for myself with no, I guess, outside influences, just allowing the word of God to speak to me in the way that, you know, it, it, it just did. <laughs> um, That's how I was able to love myself. Once I really read God's plans for me and what he has for me, it's just like, okay, I I am a good person. I am a great person. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Like I was really able to put the pieces together for myself. And that is really why I like wrote my book as well. Um, The Master Reset. It was just about stripping off all the insecurities, the doubts, the fears, and then replacing it with God's truth. Because like I said, I, I really felt like living in, as a millennial, you go by what society tells you. Um, society's truth but you know I just realized like God's word trumps that and it's what like keeps me grounded and solid and like I said every day as I read my bible it's just like kind of building me back up to the way that I'm I know I'm supposed to be you know full fearless and you know accepting myself for who I am so that is my story and (laughs) how and why I'm on my self-love journey and here I am today. And that's beautiful because in life, we go through the pruning process and the pruning process is cutting away the baggage, cutting away the bondage, cutting away the 
strongholds, the soul ties, and things that are not conducive to where God wants us to go. And that takes you on a journey where sometimes you have to get alone. You have to get in your secret place and your quiet place so God could work on you, so he could usher in. Because when you're so busy doing life without God, you're susceptible to distractions. You're susceptible to imposter syndrome, thinking that you're not good enough. You're susceptible to looking at everybody on social media and seeing, ooh, ooh, girl, she 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 got them butt implants or she or she got her her tummy tuck or all these superficial things that is fixing out the outward appearance. But what's more important is doing the inward. And once you go through the self-discovery and you really know who you are and whose you are, you're not going to fall victim to what society says about you, what your family and friends say about you, and the superficial things that is not conducive to your personal growth or your professional growth. And it's all about doing the work. You have to take actions and you have to plant the right seeds so you can live that holistic life mentally, physically, emotionally, and most important, spiritually. So now that we know you went on this self-love and this journey of Cinquetta Wilt and putting you first, you had to learn how to love you, which took self-awareness and all the things that came with it. And how did you begin to inspire others along your journey once you got yourself whole and complete? Wow, Genesis. I just want to say, like, you were speaking my language <laughs> just then. Like, I'm like, she gets it. That's really what it's about. But um, I realized, like, in order to inspire others, God had to do a work in me first. Um, I thought that I was good. I really, and when I think about it, I thought I was fine. I Yeah, I thought I loved myself. Yeah, I, I thought I wanted God's best for me. I knew his best for me. But it wasn't until... Um, I, and I talk about this in the book, um, and I use an example, like, well, it's a true story, but you know, I changed up the people. <laughs> so, and in the book, I talk about Tracy and I seen Tracy going out and about, she was dating and relationships. And I just felt like she was attracting people that wasn't on her. I don't want to say on her level, but you know, like that I felt like, okay, what's going on here? Um, does she not know? Like, she's so beautiful. She's whole, she's she's got it going on. Like, does she not see herself? Why doesn't she not see herself the way I see her? Why don't she see herself as great as I see her? And then I went and prayed about it because it really bothered me. I'm like, God, like what's going on? Why can't she see herself as you, as, as I see her? And then that's when God turned it back on me. You know, that scripture, that's just like, get the moat out of your eye before you try to get out somebody else's. That was what happened for me. It was like, God was like, "Uh uh-uh, Sinquetta, how come you don't see yourself as whole. Why aren't you acting like I don't have my best in mind for you? Because the way that you're, the way that you're praying, the way that you're walking in fear shows that you don't like really believe me like you're supposed to, or, or like my word tells you to. So that's when everything was just like, uh aha. And then to know that God, like I said, God, I felt like God spoke to me in that moment. It just kind of like, healed every insecurity or every hole of insecurity like literally by him affirming me it just kind of filled me up in that way and that's when the light bulb went on of like okay what's all the lessons I learned what's all the ways I wasn't honoring myself what's all the ways that I was walking in fear and then that's when I used the word of God to like (laughs) put on top of that you know so that's really what my whole journey has been about like anytime I feel like I'm not receiving God's best I'm down here crying because of somebody, a guy or something, or um, I'm upset about like a job I didn't get or a promotion I get. Like, wait a minute, like what does God word have to say about this? And then it helps rebuild me back up. So, and then, like I said, I just put in a book. (laughs) So yes, that's how I try to inspire people. I like how you did that and how you talked about Tracy and then you went to God to ask God for clarity and confirmation and God gave you a scripture that not only strengthened you, but he gave you a scripture to teach you in that moment that You have to take the speck out of your own eye before you try to remove the plank out of somebody else's eye. So it's almost like 
don't look at her and judge her when you need to do the work internally. So you see how sometimes God, he gives us what we, not, not always what we need, but what we want, or sometimes not what we want, but what we need, because it goes vice versa, because it's a process that we have to go through, where sometimes he's going to knock you all the way down so you can humble yourself in order to build you back up. So I like to tell people the potter's wheel still works. So if you think about in the Bible, when God talked about putting people's on the potter's wheel and think about if you have the potter's wheel and they're pumping the pedal and they're molding it, they're molding it and shaping it. God is always molding us and shaping us to what he wants us to be because he created you as a masterpiece. He created me as a masterpiece. And he's not going to allow you to go through something that he can't bring you through. Sometimes he may allow you to suffer because he wants you to learn the lesson. And once you learn the lesson and pass the test, he's going to unlock those destiny assignments, those destiny doors, give you divine interventions and divine connections. But if you're not ready to pass the test, then he can't unlock lock the doors and give you the access. So you may have the key, but the key is not going to fit into the door because it's not time for you to unlock what's behind the door until you go through what he's trying to bring in you and through you. So now when we talk about dating and relationships, how do you go about dating and relationships? Because you have to be very intentional when you are dating and whenever you are entering in any kind of relationship, whether it's personally or professionally, because you want to make sure you're equally yoked with somebody and that person is not going to take you back to where you used to be. That person is not going to have you acting all crazy. And that person is just right for you because spirits leap, spirits transfer. And you also want to make sure that you're not wasting time on the wrong things or the wrong people. Because we all know people come into our life for various reasons and various seasons. So don't ever confuse seasonal people for lifetime people. So, Yes, I absolutely agree with that statement. And for me, I feel like, again, I think it's very dangerous um, to date unless you have a relationship with God because God will tell you about a person like like, you know, we just talked about me going to God um, about Tracy, you know, a situation happened to me like that. I was in grad school. I really kicked it off with a guy. I really liked him. Like, you know, this is kind of too good to be true, but let's just rock with it. And um, I prayed about it. I'm like, you know, God, if this is for me, let me know. Like, let me know what's going on. I feel like a week later, I called him and a girl answered the phone. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> can I speak to such and such? And she was just like, okay, is there something I can help you with? I'm his fiance. Or maybe he said girlfriend, one or the other. It was years ago. I mean, I just try to block it out. <laughs> but and I was just like, oh, well, no, you can't help me. But, and I just hung up. <laughs> and then he texted me the next day. and was just like, oh, ignore that crazy girl. Da, 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 da. But it just, it, to me, I felt like the timing. Like when I prayed to God for an answer, he definitely answered back. He showed me, you know what I mean? Maybe not audibly, but the situation kind of like revealed itself. And I really feel like that's why it's important to bring God in a situation and also have like godly counsels. Um, a uncle that you respect, a pastor, somebody that you can go to, like other men that can maybe vet this person for you people that care about you because you know as girls you know we'd be liking people and you know sometimes we just don't see what other people can see so you know your multitude of counsels you know have people around you that can be like all right Sinqueta that was a little mm, did you ask them about this and then I also feel like if you're a Christian girl dating you know ask them uh, when did they get to know Christ for themselves don't ask them, do they believe in God? Because I feel like that's a general and a lot of a lot of guys will say that they believe in God, but like kind of ask a little deeper. Okay, so when was the first time that you accepted, you know, Lord Jesus Christ as your personal, you know, ask something. When was the last time you heard something in church that really resonated with you or sermon? You know, ask those kind of deep questions, you know, because people are crafty. People are crafty, you know, on their own days. So 
um just whatever is important to you you can ask like oh what's your favorite scripture what's your favorite gospel like things like that because i feel like a lot of times people well a lot of times guys will say yeah i believe in god mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah and you know <laughs> you, you that's kind of re- really general so you just want to like really ask questions so ask questions and have your counselors around you so that's that's my thing when it comes to dating So try the spirit by the spirit and put the guy to the test. Or for you guys that are listening, put the woman to the test. So you should really go beyond the surface level. And whenever you're dating somebody, the purpose of dating is to really get to know that person to see, can I spend my life with this person? And you're not going to figure it out on the first date, the second date, or the third date. So really be intentional and look out for Uh, clues, whether it's their body language, look out for how do they treat you? Is it consistent? Um, How is their communication style? And then put them to the test sometimes. Do they walk it like they talk it? Like uh, one thing you could ask, like if you're very spiritual and religious, just say, hey, why don't you come visit my church this Sunday and I could visit your church on Sunday? Or, hey, do you want to come to Bible study? Do you want to break bread together? Do you want to go um, in the community and do some outreach, some ministry or something like that? Um, Then as you start to become more comfortable, then you could open up, let's go to the movies. Because I've learned on a first date, you can't really go to the movies on a date because you're watching the movie. You can't really talk because I'm that type of person. If I'm in the movies and you're talking, I'm going to politely look back and I'm going to tell you, can you please be quiet? I may do it nicely two times, but the third time, you know, the Lord is still working on me as he works on us all. And I may get a little, you know, half holy, half hood with it and put some more bass in my voice, especially if it's a good movie that I paid to watch. And just be mindful of if you're a female and that guy is taking you on a date, where is he trying to take you on a date? Be mindful there. Then ask, okay, does he open your car door? Because chivalry is not dead. So how, what type of manners is he portraying? And then another thing is check who his friends are because you have to be mindful. Who is that man surrounding himself with? And are they a positive influence? Not that we are judging somebody else, but we wanna make sure that whoever he's spending his time with, that they are a good influence for him. Just like men, vice versa for women. Is that woman confident and secure? Who is she spending her time with? What is she doing? Because that all will, you know, spill over into a relationship and down the road that may cause havoc. So you really have to be intentional when you go into dating and relationships. And that's all about self-love. And when you love yourself, you're not going to put up and tolerate nonsense and foolishness. Come on, Cinqueta, let me know. I agree. You are talking my language once again. And another thing that as you were talking, we're you're all free to do what you want, but I feel like wisdom, if I could just uh no inside house dates, the first date, you know what I mean? Because I feel like again, God is still working on us all. So although you may be like, you know, I can handle being alone with someone in a house, we're still wrapped in the flesh. So I wouldn't like even try it, especially, you know. I hope you're hitting it off with that person really good, you know? So outside dates for the first couple of, you know, dates of getting to know somebody, just just for accountability, you know what I mean? Because you don't want to go to, and like I said, everybody's grown, everybody's an adult, but you know, you know, don't, if you can help it, try not to put yourself in a, a situation that may be a little tempting for you. So that's just all I wanted to throw in really quick. <laughs> Oh, I like that because I like resisting the temptation and also setting up the boundaries by not letting somebody come to your house, especially if you don't know that person well enough, because some some people do carry certain spirits with and your house is your sanctuary, your place of peace. So you have to be mindful of who's coming into your house and what their purpose is, because 
everything that's on the outside may not always be conducive. So you have to check the fruit. What's the fruit behind the person? And what do they carry? So that is so important. And then another thing too, that is so important for us to take into consideration when we're talking about self-love, dating, relationship, it's also self-improvement because whenever you go from dating to you go into engagement and you're preparing for marriage, it should be a constant improvement on how are you improving yourself? Because then whenever you go into marry, it's no longer eyes, it's become we's and to become one flesh. So are you constantly improving? Are you still learning and growing? Because we all know as we begin to get older, it comes with new age, new wisdom, new knowledge, new insight. And you know, things that we did in our 20s is not going to be the same that we do in our 30s, 40s, and so on. So you have to be so mindful of the improvement factor and also having grace and mercy for that individual because just like you're growing, that man or woman may be growing too. So how are you being compassionate? So Sinqueta, let's talk about self-improvement and how we could weave that into self-love and dating and relationships. That was a wonderful question. I am all about self-improvement because like you said, that's how we grow. And I feel like, because I feel like as orange sharpens orange. So as I'm getting new experiences and trying new things and improving myself, those are things that I'm bringing into a relationship. And I would like expect, you know, my partner and mate to like, you know, bring good things into the relationship as well. But I also feel like for me, for example, my standards went up when I started putting that type of energy into myself. Because before I felt like dating was a sport or dating was my activity. You know, I couldn't wait for the person to text me back, like and to hear their voice. But now that I'm doing things like, you know, even with this podcast interview that I'm doing, it's just like, wait a minute, I have things to do. So don't waste my time. You know, I could be writing another book. I could be going to the gym. Like now I'm filling up my life with things and, and purposes that fulfill me. Before it was like, you know, being in a relationship was fulfilling me but now it's just like you know what I'm good I I really feel like maybe this is what God was trying to bring me to you know to realize like I came into this world as a single you know so let let me self-actualize you know like my podcast name self-actual let me try to bring out everything that God has deposited in me so that's why like you said I feel like self-improvement is important whatever you always want to do as a child think back look at your list look at the things that you always want to do wanted to try was it bungee jumping skydiving I'm sorry that's my list so that's how come it just came to my mind but things like that go ahead and do it it's nothing wrong with taking yourself out on a date you know treating yourself nice buying your own self flowers so just doing things that you enjoy um, learning another language, if, if you so choose, going on those mission trips, volunteering, just getting busy and just making yourself like a more well-rounded person. I just feel like people that have a lot going on that are improving themselves, they're like very interesting, you know, it's just like, oh, that's, that's cool. Be the, be the person with the interesting story that like when you go into work on Monday, like, oh, what did you do on the, on the weekend? You can be like, I did this, I did that, you know, have you know, you be that person. So you can have interesting things to say when you go back into work on Monday when people ask, what did you do on the weekend? So, yeah. <laughs> mm, okay, glow up. So let's talk about online dating. What are your thoughts with online dating? Is it something that you have tried? And if you haven't tried it, are you interested in trying it? Why or why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I feel like my thoughts on online dating has changed because of the pandemic. Before the pandemic, I would say I really didn't see the point of it because we should be, again, improving our lives, going out in the real world, doing things to meet people. You know, um, I remember this app when I had moved to Atlanta called Meetup. And you just kind of put in your interests and you find people that had the same interests as you. And I feel like that's a good way of meeting a person because at least you know like they already have that in common y'all both like this so 
okay, now you're bridging the gap. So for me, before the pandemic, I felt like, you know, meeting people in person was better than online dating. Um, now with the pandemic, I understand that people aren't going out as much. So maybe, you know, online dating is cool. I don't really have the patience for it. I mean, I try, but I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to have to go into the real world for me. Not to say God wouldn't use online dating, but for me, it's just like, I'd rather just be living my life and then bump into them at the grocery store or while I'm getting my car fixed or, you know, something like that. Just out because, like you said, spirits and being able to d- discern someone's like, you know, spirit. It may be a little difficult over online versus when you're in, a, in person with someone, you're just like, oh, no, no, thanks. But online, people can present themselves as who they want to be. So I'm like 50-50 with it for people that want to try it. I understand. And like I said, with the pandemic, I do really get it. People don't want to go out as much. But for me, I just feel like, mm, I, I'd rather be out and about. So I, I think that's the best way is to be out and about living your life. And, you know, you just be shining and the person will, God will have your paths crossed. So that's just what I think. I could be wrong, but. <laughs> Thank you for that honest insight. And now that we are getting ready to wind down, we're going to play a little game. 10 questions with Jen, the host with the mostest. And y'all know, that's me, y'all, Genesis, because it was the beginning. So, <laughs> so are you ready, Cinqueta? Are you ready? <laughs> get ready, get ready, get ready. Hey, okay. Number one, favorite movie? Meet the Parents. Why? Um, Because every time I watch that movie, it always makes me laugh. Like, I'll always be quote, quoting the parts to my family and stuff. It's just like little inside. So that is my favorite movie off the top of my head. That and Bring It On is a close second. Well, okay, I love Bring It On. But you know, there's so many different, different ones to Bring It On. <laughs> Only like the first one. I never even seen the other ones. So, yeah. Number two, favorite food? Off the top of my head, I would say pizza. It's very simple. It got all the ingredients, a little salt, a little cheese, you know, and then you don't need forks or nothing to eat it. You can eat it anywhere at any time. It's very simple. So, I would say pizza. Three, coffee or tea or neither? tea I don't like coffee I mean I think I started off wrong um the first time I had coffee was Starbucks and then people said that was too strong you have to go with Dunkin Donuts so you messed up but ever since then I just never even tried (laughs) oh four favorite vacation Mm, so far Vegas but I haven't even really went a lot of places do y'all know before the pandemic I got my passport just in case like Someone says, hey, Sinquetta, let's go to Brazil. I'll be like, okay, yeah, I can go. I got my passport. But I haven't even been out of the country, so I would just pick a Vegas so far. I really like it there. Oh, now I got to ask a follow-up question. When you go out of the country, where would you go? Um, I would love to go to Thailand, Phuket, Phuket, Thailand. Um, I'll be watching, like, YouTube videos and just, like, oh, just imagine myself there. It just looks really fun. <laughs> So, favorite TV show or Netflix series? Um, TV show slash Netflix, because that's how I watched it, is The Office. Again, another hilarious show. I mean, a lot of people say it's very dry humorous, but I'm dry humorous, so that's my show. (laughs) Okay, six. What did you want to be when you grew up and why? Yeah. So I had a few. I wanted to like at first be a male woman because I thought that was like a nice job. And then I also wanted to be a choreographer, you know, like Paula Abdul. <laughs> oh, so can you dance? Girl, Genesis dancing was my thing. Like I was on a dance team in school. I was a cheerleader. That's how come I like bring it on. Like that is my thing. But now that I'm an old, a older lady girl person. I don't, I don't dance as much. <laughs> I just do a little two steps. No, I snap my fingers now, you know. <laughs> what? You can still dance a Zumba. You could teach dance. You could go uh, 
you know, get a dance group together because, you know, dancing is a really good way to make sure you stay active and keep your body in line. So if you think about it that way, you could still love dance and you don't have to do it in a way that is not conducive to your new lifestyle. No, you're absolutely right. The pandemic is very upsetting to me, excuse me, for this reason, because I do miss the um, going to Zumba classes, but it had, and then even I was taking like adult classes, like dance classes before the pandemic hit. So that's the only thing, like our Planet Fitness is open, but I don't really like the gym like that. I am like a dancey workout person, but those kind of things haven't like got back up where in my area just yet. So I could do it at home though. I, I can give myself some DVDs, so I could do it at home. So we're on seven, so hometown. From the first state, Delaware. Ooh, Delaware. And then say the city again. Wilmington, Delaware. And what? and for people, yeah, I know y'all might know it because of uh Joe Biden. You know, like when his inauguration happened, it was like right down that is a place called the riverfront that's like 20 minutes from where I live. So yeah, he put he put Delaware on the map for us. <laughs> Okay, eight. Hey, what made you move to Atlanta? I was in Atlanta for grad school, but I'm also back home too. So once I graduated, I just moved back up to Delaware. But I was down there for grad school. Nice. Okay. Oh, where'd you go to grad school? Georgia State University. Oh, you gotta put some face in it. Say that was surprise and what else? Georgia State University. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A Panther. Go Panthers. Oh, now, I, I always love to ask this question. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? That is a good question. Hmm. I was going to say what came to my mind was um, to read people's minds. That way I can really know people's true intentions yeah, I can know if people are lying to me or just telling me things like, oh, do I look nice today? And they're just like, yeah. But in their mind, they're like, no, she don't. <laughs> so maybe that's why. But I really wanted to think of something deep, but just being a mind reader came to my head first. Okay. And then we're now on 10, right? <laughs> Keep me honest. So 10 is a question where you get to ask me anything that you wanted to know so far during the segment about me or whatever. Genesis, you have very, very great insight about like doing the inner work. So what was your experience? Do you have like a thing that tricked like a light bulb went in your head that's just like, okay, like where you had to self-examine yourself and what was that experience like? And like I said, was there an event or something that caused that to happen? Yes. Okay. So in high school, over 11 years ago, I was actually a victim of bullying. So it really took me to a dark place in my life where I went through depression. And it was during that depression where I fell in love with someone. And people ask me all the time, who'd you fall in love with? And I said, I fell in love with me. I had to learn how to love myself in the dark seasons and the trying times. And I also had a really good support system, my parents, and they just kept feeding me with the word of God. And as I was getting nurtured with the word of God, I began to get stronger and stronger and really learn to embrace who God said I was, learn how to love me and realize that sometimes people project their insecurities onto you because they know that your light is bright. But during that time, you don't realize how how bright your light is so then they want to condemn you so you could diminish who you are so they can hide in who they are as an individual so it was during that process early on in life where I really learned how to just love me then whenever I grew up into my adulthood, I faced bullying in the form of workplace hostility, working in corporate America for 15 years and always, you know, being the only black woman in oil and gas, which is, you know, the good old boys, Caucasian, white male dominated feel. And I had to constantly work twice as hard to be seen and heard and prove myself. And during that process, I had to really find my joy 
find my confidence and do the inner work so I can, you know, overcome those self um, limiting beliefs, the dot the doubts, the thoughts, and all of those things that were trying to come against me. And I realized that it was a trick of the enemy. And it was also spiritual warfare to get me off of my assignment and cause me to retreat. But I knew that God had already took me um, down that road whenever I was an adolescent in high school. So I already knew what it looked like. So I knew the blueprint, but then it was, God took me to a new place where I had to survey the land and he gave me the tools into my toolkit to really fight and overcome the enemy. So that is what allowed me to just have that insight and just have the discernment, have the wisdom and a lot of times people say I'm an old soul and I guess just having older siblings because my brother and I are 13 years apart. My other brother and I are 11 years apart and I'm closer with my brothers than my sisters. My sisters are more closer in age. My older sister is four years apart and my other sister is two years apart. So just having um, older siblings that was also influential with me because it felt like I grew up as an only child since both of my brothers went to school together and both of my sisters but I knew anytime I was going through a struggle I always could go back to them for just their wisdom since they had already walked through certain things and that is amazing wow so you're the baby interesting yeah you do grow up as when you're the youngest you you do grow up kind of probably in the no more than the average person because I only know I'm the oldest but I have a younger brother and he just can like kind of flow just right with me and I feel like because you had us to look up to you know <laughs> so that's amazing I'm so glad you shared that especially how you said like your parents strengthened you with the word of God and I wonder if that's like and it was Gen and it was Genesis so it's just like how appropriate I love that thanks for sharing my pleasure. And as we wind down, Sanquetta, I want you to leave the listeners as well as the viewers with a gem to have them hold on to what they heard in this segment. And then, oh, and then also close us out with who you are again, how they could connect with you on social media and any information that you want to plug. And all of your contact information will be in the show notes as well. Yep, sure. yep. <laughs> Thank you again, Genesis, for having me. This was like a great opportunity and a wonderful conversation. I really hope that something that we said touched the viewers tonight or today or whenever they are listening to this. But my whole thing is when you see yourself as God sees you, you will be unstoppable. So if there's ever a moment in your life where you're just feeling discouraged or down, it just, just get back into your mirror. And what I say, the mirror, go check your reflection, which is your word. Like get, get in front of this and have the word, see who you really are through God's, through God's eyes. Cause this is what the Bible does for you. So just remember that, like, if you're feeling a certain kind of way, that's not, that's not of God. Like somehow, I, you know, insecurity, so social media or something may have crept in, but you know, you just got to replenish yourself with the word of God continuously over and over and over again so see yourself as God sees you that's the one thing I want to end off with and also here's my book the master reset a girl's ultimate guide to clear no space from her spiritual hard drive and like I said the master is God I, I thought about like you know on your cell phone when it starts acting slow or it messes up and you know you have to do a factory reset and it strips off everything gets all the viruses and bugs off that's why i wrote the book it's a stripping of everything off and allowing the master to get you back to the factory reset i mean the factory settings the way that you always were supposed to act you know the fearless you the bold you the confident you that's what you know, and that's why I wrote the book at the master reset. So that's my book. Um, and also you can follow me on social media It's literally my name, Cinquetta, and it's spelled S-Y-N-Q-U-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. It looks like Cinquetta, you know, every first day of school, I already know they're going to mess up my name, but yes. So it's Cinquetta and you can find me on Twitter by the same name, Facebook, Instagram, all that jazz. And same thing with my YouTube channel. So that is how you guys can find me. And I really hope you enjoy it. And I would love to connect and talk to you guys. So Yes, that's, that's about me. <laughs>
And there you have it, listeners and viewers of Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp. You just heard Cinqueta Wilts on the podcast, and we talked about self-love and how that carries over into dating and relationships and also self-improvement. So make sure you plug in and get all of the juiciness from this episode. And as I like to sign out, peace love, and lots of blessings. Go out and have yourself a wonderful day. Remember you are a masterpiece and don't dim your light because other people can't take the shine. Keep on shining, keep on glowing, and keep on being authentically and unapologetically you.